All right, we're going to paint a lemon, and first we're gonna mix all, let's start with all this, and start from scratch. We're gonna mix with the primaries, red, cadmium red medium, cadmium yellow light, cobalt blue, and titanium white. So we'll start mixing color, and then I'll do this painting with you guys start to finish. All right, we're gonna mix some color out of the primaries. So I have cobalt blue, cadmium red medium, cadmium yellow light, and we like cadmium yellow light because as cadmium goes from light to medium to deep, it doesn't it doesn't get more white as it goes to light. It actually gets yellower. It gets more red as it goes from light to medium to deep. So if you want a, a yellow that will be the best for mixing, the light is the best. Because if you're trying, if you're outdoors, say you're trying to mix an acidy green and your yellow has a little bit of red in it, it will, since it's the complement of that green. That red will, will pull the saturation down. You won't be able to get a really green green. Uh, and titanium white. So <clears throat> my palette again is a glass palette. I can clean it off easy. All right, I can clean these off. And it's the color that my gray panel is painted. That way, the way the paint looks on the palette is the best predictor for the how it's going to look on the painting. So what we want to do is start mixing dark to light. And again, the way you keep your palette clean is to mix in one little spot and put the piles in other places. And also, if you're not sure how to organize your palette, as we add more colors to the palette, again, just copy mine. My palette's very organized. I have cool colors, dark to light, warm colors, dark to light. I only have two each right now. So we're gonna start making like a mixed black that we can use to desaturate things with. So we'll use, we know that the red's a lot stronger. That's way too purple and red. The red's so much stronger than the blue. It's not 50-50. It's honestly more like probably 70-30 or even 80-20. 80% cobalt blue to 20% of the red to start to get a neutral. They desaturate each other a little bit. It doesn't give you a super saturated violet, even though it's red and blue. Um, now that's a little purpley, so we're just gonna touch the yellow so it doesn't go too green. And we want to make a nice mixed black. That's a little violety and blue. Let's pull it down. Still too blue. So blue and orange are the opposites. So that's why we do this palette. It's basically to teach you how to mix a lot of colors out of a few colors. Uh, there are a lot of paintings. For example, Pissarro painted out of a very limited palette like this quite a bit. And you can see the dark you get isn't that dark. So when you see his paintings in a museum, you'll notice his darks aren't that dark, but his lights are pretty light. So just the neutral's a tricky color to mix. But it's good because if it works, I can desaturate other colors with it. So there's no white in it, but all the other three colors. So like with the Ultramarine Burnt Sienna palette, we're going to dirty our colors, right? So we're going to try painting a lemon because it's super simple. The drawing's really simple. So let's mix up some colors. I have the lemon on a, I have the lemon on a gray surface and there's bluishness behind it. So why don't we start with what's around it? I'm just gonna mix up a guess at those colors. I'll probably will nudge them around a little bit. So this is a little bit of a dirty blue already because I had some of the other colors in here. But that's maybe too blue, a little, a little dark. Now I chose a lemon for this demo just because the drawing is super simple. Cause really I wanted to isolate talking about color mixing in this one. So I think that blue behind it's a little more, a little greener. And again, I just want to first guess, maybe a few values for each thing I want to paint. So if I take my, my mixed dark and try to make some of the grays with it, 
right? White is a cold color, so when I add white into things, it goes very blue. Look how purpley that is. So if it's too purple, I will add yellow, right? Because that's the opposite. To desaturate it, bring it back down to a more reasonable gray. That's okay. Now my palette's getting a little messy. So in this case, I could scrape it off. If you have a wooden palette, you can just wipe it off with a, with a rag or with a, with a paper towel. So if I want, let's say, a lemon color, we'll start with yellow. Lemons are yellow, but the dark on the lemon's tricky because yellow's a tricky color to mix. It really wants to go, if I just mix it with the dirt I have on here, it's gonna go to green because that's pretty bluish. So it's a tricky color because you want to balance between the blue and the red. You don't want it to go too green or too orange. So it's a tricky color to go dark. That's going to go too green. But my lemon actually has a little bit of green on it, so that might be okay. Maybe that's useful. I'm gonna be adjusting these as I actually paint. I just want to start with a few colors mixed up. And again, this might seem like it's slowing you down to take this extra step to mix some colors, but it's very useful. I'll red it back up a little bit because if it's going well and I have to stop and think about a color that's in between two other colors, then maybe I've lost my path a little bit. So that's why I wanna start that's a little green. I want to make it pretty neutral because it's easy to make it greener or oranger. The tricky thing is to get it balanced. That's still a little green. But I want to be very careful with that red because it's so strong. That's a pretty greenish yellow for the dark. But maybe I'll just leave it off for now. I just want to mix a few values. Let's say like a mid-tone for the lemon. Maybe I can add a little bit of white in. Now as I add white, look how cold it goes. The white acts almost like a blue, which is why I have it over on the cold side. So if I'm coming up a little bit, that doesn't look like it's yellow enough. So we'll yellow it some. Now, now that we have a full palette, you really want to save your colors, right? I mean, save your, save your saturation. Your extremes of saturation, like how yellow you can make something, how red you can make something, how blue you can make something, or orange or whatever specific color, is like your extremes in value. Like here's my darkest dark and lightest light. If I was painting in monochrome, I'd be careful with that. Now that we're working with color, we also want to be careful with our saturation. So color has a point of incandescence, which is how red can you make something before it looks like a stoplight. That's as red as I can go, so I'm going to be very careful and save that. So if I'm painting something yellow, the same thing for the pure yellow. I want to keep my colors a little bit dirty so that my saturation will pop. I'll have that extreme of saturation when I need it, just like I would want to save that extreme of value for when I need it. So I think that's looking okay for a mid-toned. Looks a little cool. That might be all right though. I think the ground it's on is a little cool. All right, let's try a lighter lemon color. And, oh. That looks pretty good. Again, staying a little bit cool. And let's think about a highlight color. If you were painting something monochromatic, the light source I have is a little bit, a little warm, right? So if I want a highlight color, like the lemon's the very lightest, then maybe I want to Maybe I want to have a, I, don't, I wouldn't just want to use white for it. I want to take into account 
the color temperature of the light source. So if you're outside, the sun is a warm white, right? You can tell as opposed to when you're indoors and it looks sort of bluish. Daylight is a, a, a little bit of a warm uh, light in the very lightest part. Sunlight's a little bit warm. So if I wanna highlight color that's a little warm, I'm gonna start with the white and just add the red and yellow into it to warm it up a little bit. So that way I have a warm highlight, kind of like my light source. So that's way too pink. Let's see. So if it's too pink, maybe I'll yellow it a little bit. It's kind of orangey a little bit, the light, the light source. So my highlights might be a little bit orangey. And I would say I could probably get even brighter than that, so I'll just go ahead. And you can see how my pile got kind of big. That's why I was suggesting you start with white. If you start with colors and add white in them to lighten it up, you're going to end up using a lot more paint than you need to. And I've painted, done this a million times, and I still ended up with a pile that's a, little, a lot more than I'm going to need for a, a little dot of highlight. I'm still going to leave it about there. So you notice... I have colors that are basically cooler and cooler colors on the left, warmer colors on the right, darker at the top, lighter at the bottom. However you organize your palette, stay consistent. And if you're not sure how to organize it, again, just copy mine. It's pretty organized. It's a logical way to uh, make decisions about color and value. I just wanted a lighter color for the for the around. That's too blue, right? So I'll calm it down a little bit with the other ones. All right, I think I can paint the lemon with this. So let's go ahead and give it a try. All right, so we're going to paint a lemon. Now I started with an exposure that's a little bit dark just to make it really clear where the highlight is on the lemon. So now we'll pull it back up and get started. And we're gonna start with a, our mixed dark, right? Well, maybe I'll warm it up a tiny bit. I wanna start with a color without any black in it to make it easier to correct, right? And we, I chose a lemon because there's the drawing super simple on it. It's almost hard to draw a lemon wrong. Right, I just want to get get our little lemon shape. And here's the thing that I've talked about that's really useful, which is just a square dowel. I can use it as a mall stick. It's good for making straight lines too. So from my eye level, what the lemon is on meets what's behind it about here so it's easy for me to if you want to make a straight line you just rest the ferrule of the brush on your uh, stick and the square is easy because it doesn't roll as much so it makes it easier to keep the position of it so I can just kind of map out right just drag it along to make a straight line now on the other side of the lemon I have the angle coming down a little bit right because the corner of what it's on is right behind the lemon from where I'm looking at it so again, if you want to just match angles, that can be a useful way to help get these things right without building your perspective up. Let's see, it's about there. And it, you notice at the outset, I'm not using a lot of paint, right? I just have a little bit of, a little bit of paint on here because I want it to be easy to change. And I'm also not using, I'm not mixing a lot of white into anything at this point, uh, I want it to be easy to correct, right? If I make a mistake and I do something I don't want, I can just dip a little bit of paper towel in the solvent and wipe it off. It actually erases better than starting with pencil and erasing things off. So I'm really, I want to start drawing things out with the brush. So I have a really simple composition, something easy to draw, because really this is primarily about helping you guys mix color. So I'm going to start with some of the 
uh, where my darkest darks are. Really, they're right underneath. My darkest dark from where I'm looking is right underneath where the lemon is resting on that little gray board there. And my neutral's a little bit bluish, which is okay because I have some cast shadow here. The, the cast shadow under the lemon is right about here. And you notice that cast shadow has a soft edge. Shadows are are softer the further they are from the object that's casting it. So I can actually make that point really clear with the brush. I put my brush against here. Right here, next to the brush, the edge is hard of the shadow. Down here, as it moves further away, that shadow edge gets softer and softer. So as a rule, I'll tend to keep the cast shadows around things pretty soft. And that cast shadow is definitely really dark too, so. Now, I'm gonna start setting in the shadow side of the lemon like it's a little planet. And that shadow side is a little bit darker than the gray that it's on right here. See, at the right right here, it's a little, it's a little darker. So what I tend to do with this stuff is just put a little dot of color on to test it, right? Before I start painting everything in and then try to change the color, I'll kind of map things out. Like here's basically where the from where I'm looking where the lemon's in shadow. And, ah, I got too much red on there. So you can see I'm nudging the colors that I mixed initially for the lemon a little bit. By nudging it, I mean changing it a little bit to make it more like what I'm seeing. Cause that's a pretty dark over there. That looks better. Now I'm just going to lay in the whole night side of the lemon. Now over here it's greener, right? It's, it's a little warmer here than it is over there. So that's a pretty easy thing to do. If it's greener, I can just touch the blue. That should make it go pretty green. That's even a little, that's pretty green. Now, the great thing about oil paint is that it stays wet for a long time, and the frustrating thing about oil paint is that it stays wet for a long time. So I think it's a great thing because I can do things like soften, like and change this blue and kind of slowly make it go from cooler to warmer here. Uh, it, and I'm also starting with the shadows for that reason because it's easier, it's still easier to fix. If all I have are the shadows, I don't have a lot of white in anything. If I wanted to nudge things like, fix my drawing, I can just erase it out with a little bit of paper towel. So now that I have the a little bit of cast shadow and a little bit of the shadow on the lemon, I wanna paint everything that's around it, right? Because painting is a relational art and things don't exist by themselves. They only exist by virtue of their relationship to other things, meaning in this case, the lemon is lighter than what's behind it and darker than what's behind it. And also the color I'm seeing is in relation to what the lemon is in front of and what's underneath it, what's all around it. The color doesn't exist by itself or the value. So we don't ignore things in painting. We wanna address everything. So I'm gonna use the biggest brush I can and just start to I'm gonna use my estimated color first, put a big dot on it and test it. It looks pretty reasonable. And it's, I guess I got it a little bit darker down near the, right behind the lemon here. That's a little too purpley. All right, so I'm just gonna block that in. Uh, it's a little darker over here as well. And I probably have a little bit of that blue down here. Let's see, is it more? Ah, oh, that blue looks okay. So I'm just gonna, I can sort of fix my initial, my initial drawing wasn't really that careful because I picked something pretty easy to draw, but I can 
kind of fix those the contour of the lemon with a big brush and just pull into it a little bit. That way when I paint the light on the lemon later, uh, the paint will be in on top and the lemon's in front, right? I can work my edges kind of continually that way. Also, you notice I'm starting to try to vary my colors everywhere right out of the bat. Out of the gate, I guess, not out of the bat. So it's a little bit lighter up here. But I don't want to have any real flat color anywhere. So now I'm just smoothing it out so it sits behind. And again, my preferred term for the stuff around the lemon in this case is the surround, right? Just because it encourages an active uh, relationship. Because all these colors are really active. If I take a warmer color and put it by the lemon, you can see it gets a lot warmer. Ah, I don't want to move it. So now this gray. This gray is kind of close. It's actually not that close. It's a little cooler than what I have on my palette. I don't know how useful this gray I mixed up will be. Let's see. Mm, that's too blue. So. Oh, that looks pretty reasonable. So I'm really just balancing the colors and trying to get the value right. Now just like with the cloth hanging behind the lemon, this that it's sitting on, if I make it all the same color, it's going to look like this. It's going to remain flat and be hard to tell whether it's just facing you or whether it's something in space. If I look carefully at this, it's lighter here than it is here. So maybe I start back here and test my See, test my edge and see if it stays a little bit lighter than what's behind it. Like that looks okay to me, right? It's just a little lighter than what's behind it. So when I start putting these colors down, I'll, you notice I, I'll test the color at an edge sometimes so I can see the relationship, right? Because what's behind is darker than what's in front right here. So I make sure that I go there. That's a little bit darker than this. And again, like the lemon is a little bit darker than what's behind it right here. So I want to be careful. Not to go, uh, not to go darker than this, the dark part of the lemon on the uh, little board that the lemon is sitting on. So I'm gonna come up to my ed, my shadow edge. Maybe I'll just, now it, I, I'm gonna kind of almost like paint by numbers it. If where I see a value in color, that's where you can use the slow drying quality of oil paint to your advantage. If I just throw it all in and then modify it, that can sometimes go a lot faster than making a lot of little color choices. Making like small color choice, moving from one small color choice to the next can take you a lot longer and be more more frustrating and time consuming. So I'm just gonna lighten it down here. And then I'll pull. It's still a little bit bluer. Then I'll pull this up. And I was talking about the shadow, I cast shadow edge being soft. It's also blue, right? It's taking on a lot of that color that's behind it. So maybe I need a softer. A smaller brush. And I can start working that shadow edge. Oh. All right, that kind of shadow edge. I do this a lot. So I'm blotting out the extra solvent that was in my brush. Then I just touch the medium. Again, you could probably use solvent for both if you want, but I like having one that I keep clean. And as soon as you touch the surface, the brush really drinks in a lot of paint. So now I can start 
See back here, it's got a little bit more, like this acts like a mirror too. So over here in the shadow, it's reflecting more of this blue back here. So if I just literally pull some of that in and work out towards the lid edge, I'll soften my shadow out there. And same on the other side. Now I can soften the outside edge of that cast shadow. Right? If you have a hard shadow edge, sometimes it can look like a, a separate object. And I've got a little bit of a little bit of sloppiness back here. Let's try and reiterate this. This is a little lighter here. So the reason I showed you a darker exposure right at the beginning was it made it easier to see where the highlight is. And one of the things you can use if you're not sure what's wrong with your painting, like what needs to be fixed, is your, your phone. Not to really take a picture of it, but to look at it backwards in your phone like it's a mirror, right? They used to have what's called a black mirror in some of the academies, which was just literally a mirror that was black on the back. And it pulls the value down a little bit, like I did at the beginning, to make it easier to see where the highlights are. And if you're looking at something in a mirror, it's backwards, right? So that makes it easier to see where things need to be fixed. So now I'll work my way up through some of the mid-tones. So let's just test a color. That's an okay transition to start coming up out of the darks and I can see on the right side of lemon too a little greener so if I just touch the blue that should be plenty right up. oh yeah that's greener just a little greener up there a little greener over here Down here, I, I really, it still, it looks like it's floating a little bit all of a sudden. That's because I don't really have the lemon sitting on, you can see it has like reflected shadow at the very bottom. So the lemon is the very darkest at the bottom. Now I'll get some of our darkest dark in with some of that darker lemon and try and go darker down right here where it's touching to ground it out a little bit and fill the shadow a little clearer now I'm starting to get to the come up closer to the lights So I just want to test what I had for lit value. That looks pretty reasonable. Huh. So I'm just going to lay that in and then I'll nudge it around. So this edge up here looks like it could use a little bit of fixing too. So even though the lemon's pretty simple shape, I don't want to just disregard the drawing. I want to see if I can get a little closer each time I touch it. All right, just pull that down a little bit. All right, so now I can pull some of the other color into that a little bit, work my way up to the lit part a little slowly. So see this, this lit part comes down further. So that's the advantage again of oil paint. I can pull this down in to the shadow a little bit to soften the edge and pull the lit part down a little further. Maybe I want a little cooler over here.
so I'll work my way. edges so now I'm starting to come up into the lights more maybe I'll get a clean brush and put more of this lit tone on here now I should have maybe saved a little bit of where it's in the highlight color. Maybe I'll just thin it out a little bit, make it easier. Whoops, I pulled it all the way off. Well, that certainly thinned it out um, to make it easier to get the highlight color on there, right? So I wanna work my way out from all the way up to the highlight. All right, so the highlight's a lot lighter. I'm gonna use a smaller brush. Now the lemon does have a little texture on it. I guess I could use a finer, like a, a round brush like this to uh, work my way up into the highlights and get some of the texture of the lemon. But really for this demonstration, what I wanna do is show you a setup and how I mix the color and how I was setting up the whole painting and looking at the light overall, right? Because really light is the real subject matter for this. That's why I spent some time on the palette and why I'm being very careful about where the lights and darks are and their relationship to each other. All right, so I wanna build up into the lights. Some of these next to light lights are pretty bright and a little bit of temperature variation on them. It's greener in some parts, like over here, a little greener. So now I'm starting to get to where I want to start kind of fussing with things. So I probably will leave off in a minute because that's, this is the, this is really the foundation for what I'm going to work on from now on, right? I just wanted to get it set up and show you, I'm working my way all the way up to, uh, up to where the highlights are on the lemon, like right up there. And you notice when you get to the highlights too, the first time you touch, the first time you touch the painting, it's all of what you have on the brush. Each time you touch it after that, it pulls up a little bit more of what's underneath if you're working wet into wet like this. So if you really want to be decisive about those highlights at the end, you kind of have to put them on and leave it alone and not try to go back and fuss with it because that will, um, that will continue to pull up more of what's underneath into the paint. And this is a little warmer over here. All right, so now I'm getting pretty fussy. So we'll leave off at that. So I hope that's helpful. Basic setup, uh, color mixing, and really paying attention to the light and the relationship of values, especially where things are touching, where things are darker than what's behind them or where things are lighter than what's behind them.